describe this as disgusting and despicable, I'm guessing you're going to use similar language. I think people are absolutely outraged. You know, we were all being told at that time that we had to obey the COVID rules. It was legislation. It was the law. People were being charged if they broke the regulations. You could only meet with one other person outside. And here we had a party at number 10, sanctioned by the Prime Minister's private secretary. And you're reporting tonight that we believe that the Prime Minister was there. This is not acceptable. This is the Prime Minister that was telling the rest of us that we had to obey the rules. It's been one rule for the rest of us and a different rule for them. And I'm afraid when it comes to the responsibility, a fish rots from the head and the Prime Minister can't lay the blame at his principal private secretary. He needs to take responsibility for this. Why did he allow a party to take place, breaching the COVID rules inside number 10. And let's not forget that the Prime Minister came to the House of Commons just a few weeks ago and said that staff had to be held accountable if they had been partying where they shouldn't have been. Here we have clear evidence that the Prime Minister, number 10, his office, his staff, his senior staff, are up, up to their necks in this. And when people couldn't attend family funerals, when people were watching their loved ones dying, where people couldn't visit their relatives in care homes, to see a prime minister that with his colleagues in government, they were effectively laughing at the rest of us, laughing at those that were going through the pain and the misery of COVID. This is a failure of leadership. This is a man that doesn't have the moral authority to lead these islands. It's a man that should accept responsibility. And if, frankly... Okay, if he should be giving us an explanation and he should be if, going. If their defence had been, and they'd come out uh, and explained what had happened, that we were on a war footing, working 21 hours out of every 24 with unimaginable pressure and strain, you know, a little bit like, and perhaps this is the, the wrong example, the Second World War and you've taken a village and you've been fighting the Germans for days and, you know, the soldiers have a beer and a cigarette uh, in order to relieve tension. Would you have bought that? Would that have been excusable? Anna, you're right to put that question, but the people that I would have sympathy with are those that were working in our health services, those that were working on our front line, that were on their knees with what they were having to do. It certainly is not acceptable for those around the Prime Minister to celebrate the good weather by having this party when everybody else was being told that if you behaved in such a way that you were breaking the law. Let's be clear, you were breaking the law and you run the risk of criminal sanction. This is a Prime Minister that's not fit for office. He's not fit for leadership. He should accept well, the, a responsibility. Lawyer, a lawyer we had on in Before the last hour as well, who Commons. represented a, a number of those who had to pay £10,000 fines uh, for breaking the COVID rules, said actually there was an almost non-exhaustive list of reasonable excuses. Would, would reasonable excuses explain this away? No. I mean, this is putting two fingers up to everybody else. This is behaviour which is unacceptable. Prime Minister has to be above this kind of behaviour. A Prime Minister has to have authority, has to have the trust of the people. And whether you're talking about this and everything else that's gone on, those that have given money to his government that have ended up in the House of Lords, those that gave money for the refurbishment of Number 10, this is a Prime Minister that thinks he can get away with whatever he likes and quite simply doesn't accept that he has to obey the law that the rest of us have to... It's not good enough. He should resign. But the Tory MPs behind me in Westminster should accept their responsibility and they should remove this man that doesn't understand the dignity of office, that doesn't understand that he has to have respect as a leader. He has failed just, in doing okay, that. Just, you, you've, made, you've, made, you've made that point. You've, you've made your, your thoughts clear on Boris Johnson. Just very quickly in terms of those around him, the civil servants possibly, or, or the special advisers, Allegra Stratton has already resigned as we know. Do you think Martin Reynolds should also go? I think, sad to say, on the basis of that email that he sent, of course, because people have to accept responsibility for their actions. There has to be dignity and respect. You have to act as a leader. And Boris Johnson and many of those around them have failed that test. They should accept responsibility and they should recognise that they should leave office. So, so is that Mr Reynolds needs to go? Absolutely, on the basis of inviting people to a party. You're the Prime Minister's private secretary, 
and you've ignored the fact there's one other person that you can meet with outdoors at that time, inviting 100 people, and any of the nonsense that we've heard over the last few weeks about gatherings, parties didn't take place, well, that's been blown apart by the evidence of the email that we now all know about. And I, I have to say, when you have behaved in such a way, the way that he has behaved, at a time that everybody else were making enormous sacrifices, where people couldn't be with their loved ones, there is no way either the Prime Minister or Reynolds should remain in office. They should do the decent thing. They should Ian have the Blackford. dignity and self-respect to recognise that the position is not tenable. Ian Blackford, appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed there. But I understand and share the anger up and down the country at seeing number 10 staff seeming to make light of lockdown measures. And I can understand how infuriating it must be to think that the people who have been setting the rules have not been following the rules, Mr. Speaker, because I was also furious to see that clip. And Mr. Speaker, I apologize. I apologize unreservedly for the offense that it has caused up and down the country, and I apologize for the impression that it gives. But I repeat, Mr. Speaker, that I have been repeatedly assured since these allegations emerged that there was no party and that, and that no COVID rules were broken.